I'm excited to welcome you to the absolute best video on JavaScript data types you'll find anywhere on YouTube. In this video, I cover everything you need to know in detail and use interactive animations, beautiful illustrations, and professional editing to ensure you remain engaged in order to maximize your learning. So let's jump in. So let's start off by talking about data types. Data is at the heart of JavaScript, serving as the foundation to achieve specific outcomes. Looking at the juice bar analogy I've been using so far, to make a juice, we need different kinds of ingredients, like fruit, vegetables, and sugar. These ingredients are then processed in a blender. And the final result is that our juice is produced. And the juice is simply a blend of the different ingredients. That is, a blend of our fruit, vegetables, and sugar. And the aim of the juice bar is to splice and dice these to give us a specific outcome, which is a juice. This is exactly the same thing in JavaScript, where we process different kinds of data to produce a specific outcome on a web page. Now, data in JavaScript can take two types of values. We have primitive values, and these are the simplest building blocks that can't be broken down any further. In our juice bar analogy, we have an ingredient like a carrot and an apple. These fruit items can't be broken down any further. Of course, they can be sliced and diced, but a piece of apple is a foundational unit. You can kind of think of it like elements in the periodic table. Take oxygen, for example. It's a building block which can't be broken down any further. These are our primitive values in JavaScript. And a fancy word we use to describe them is immutable, which means that they can't change. The second type of value we have are complex values. These are more complex structures that can store multiple values and features. In our juice bar analogy, we can think of this as muesli. Muesli is an ingredient in my favorite juice, Brekki to Go Go from Boost Juice Bar. And muesli contains multiple ingredients. It contains brown sugar, it contains oats, it contains raisins and almonds. So you can see muesli is made up of primitive values. In chemistry, it's kind of like a mixture, like the air we breathe, which contains nitrogen gas, oxygen gas, and other kinds of gases. A fancy word in JavaScript we use to describe complex values are mutable. That is, they can change. So for example, we could add more food groups into the muesli. For example, like dried pineapple. So primitive values and complex values are the two categories of values we can have in JavaScript. Later on in the course, we're gonna be talking a lot about complex values, but to start off with, we need to talk about primitive values. JavaScript has seven primitive value types, with three of them being more commonly used. There are two other primitive values that deal with the absence of values, and we'll be looking at that in a later video. And there are another two values, symbol and big int are other primitive values not often used. So let's take a look in more detail at the three most commonly used primitive values. I'm gonna be going through them in this table here. The first data type is numbers. These are numeric values, which are both integers and decimals. Their use in JavaScript is for calculations. Some examples include the number 25 or the number 4.92. So the numbers we use in JavaScript can be integers or contain decimals. In our juice bar analogy, we could say numbers of fruit. There are all different kinds of fruit we can use like apples, bananas, and pears. Just like there are an infinite number of numbers we can use in JavaScript. The second key primitive value type are strings. These are a sequence of characters enclosed in quotes. Their main use in JavaScript is for text. Here's a string using single quotation marks of my channel, and here's the same string using double quotation marks. You can use either single or double quotation marks for strings. And in this course, I'll be using both. In our juice bar analogy, these can be our vegetables. Just like there's a whole bunch of vegetables you can use, there's an infinite amount of strings you can use by stringing together different characters of the alphabet. The last data type are called Booleans. Booleans is a scary word, and if you're new to programming, it's not so obvious exactly what this is. But Booleans are a logical type that is true or false. Booleans are used for decision-making. We'll be looking at this later in the course, where if something is true, we take one direction in the code, or if it's false, we go another direction. For the Boolean primitive value, there are only two types. There's true or false. Now, this might look like a string because it's some text, but don't be mistaken, this is actually a value. Just like we have the value 25 and 4.92, true and false are actual values. Now again, if you're new to programming, this won't exactly be the clearest, but as we move through the course, you're going to see how useful having a true and false value is when it comes to decision-making because it allows us to do something called control flow, whereby we're able to take different routes in our code depending on whether a condition is true or false. 
Just as a small example, let's say we're writing some code to give a pass or fail mark for a student where the pass mark is more than 50. We would use a boolean here to help us decide whether what the student scored is more than or less than the pass mark. In our juice bar, we could say that this is like brown or white sugar. There's only two possible values a boolean can take, true or false. All right, so let's go play around with these inside VS Code. All right, so I've gone ahead and created an index.html file, and I've linked our script tags inside the body here. Now inside our script.js, let's just go add some primitive values. Let's start with some numbers. I'll add 46. Let's add a decimal, 2.89. Let's go add some strings. I'll use single quotation marks and type future full stack. And I'll type the same thing with double quotation marks, future full stack. Now, there's not much we're gonna be able to do with these values at this point, but I do just wanna show you what they look like inside VS Code. For my theme in VS Code, you can see the numbers are appearing in this yellow color and the strings are in this orange color. Let's go add our Boolean values, true and false. And you can see for me, these are in blue. Now, as you work more and more in JavaScript, these colors are really helpful in helping you identify quickly what kind of value you're actually using. For example, we could have a string which contains a number like 43. But don't be mistaken, this is a string. It is not a number type. You can see numbers are in yellow and strings are in orange. So this color system inside VS Code, which distinguishes your numbers, strings, and booleans, is really helpful for knowing which type of primitive value you're working with. Now throughout my JavaScript full course, anytime I introduce a new concept, I'm going to be showing you how it's used in a real world web application. This is really important to actually understand how this stuff is used. So that's why in this course, I've put a lot of effort into ensuring that each video you watch, you understand how it's actually used in real life. So let's take a look at primitive values in action. Here's one of my favorite videos of all time. It's a news interview with this dude called Corey Worthington, who hosted a party in Australia that went out of control. I'm sure by just looking at him, you can see straight away how funny this interview is. Anyway, I highly recommend you take a watch of it. It's one of the best things I've ever seen. All right, back to primitive values. So this is a YouTube video. Let's take a look at the different primitive values used here. You can see we have the number of views of this video, 2.9 million. This is a number type being displayed on the page. We have the title of the video, which is a sequence of text characters. So a string is being used here. Now as a viewer on YouTube, I can either be subscribed or not subscribed to the Current Affair YouTube channel. So this subscribe button is a Boolean. At the moment, I'm not subscribed. So you could think of my subscription as being false. If I were subscribed, that button wouldn't be there, which means that my subscription would be true. So you can see the Boolean is also really helpful as acting as a bit of an on off switch. Now I know this content on the page at the end of the day is HTML, but now that we're entering the world of JavaScript, we're gonna see behind the scenes how JavaScript is really controlling this. And on the page, it's just all outputted as HTML. All right, to set up the next primitive values in action, I wanna detour a bit and have a look at this TikTok. Now I've flown my fair share of budget airlines in the past. And as you may know, you need to pay extra for everything, including picking your seat. Now this TikTok summarizes me and my wife perfectly. When your relationship is worth less than five euros to sit next to each other on the plane. This is a typical Ryanair flight in Europe and is how me and my wife would sit whenever we traveled before we had kids. Now I always had the classic dad joke when someone offered to swap with me who was sitting next to my wife, and I would respond, it's okay, I spend a lot of time with her anyway. Now the reason I've started with this TikTok is because throughout this course, I'm gonna be looking a lot at the EasyJet website to explain how JavaScript comes into play. Let's take a look at some primitive values on the EasyJet homepage. If I click show flights, with who's traveling, we have some numbers. In this case, one adult, zero children, and zero infants. So our numbers are one, zero, and zero. Now throughout the course, I'm gonna be using this pinky color to represent numbers. Next, if I start typing a city, we get a list of all different cities. All of these are strings. The one I've currently selected would look like this. In quotation marks, London, all airports. And then finally, for Boolean values, when I select a destination city, this calendar window opens up. And you can see in the top right of this window, we have a toggle for return trip or one way. This would be a Boolean. The return trip is either set to true or false. In this case, it's set to true. So let's wrap up by building a summary card, data types. We saw that there were two kinds of data types in JavaScript. We first have primitive values and complex values. We saw there were seven primitive values, 
And the three most common were numbers, like 25, strings, which is a sequence of text characters enclosed by quotation marks, either single or double, like future full stack, and booleans, which is a logical type and is either true or false. Complex values are more complex structures, which we're going to be looking at in much more detail later on in the full course. If you've enjoyed this style of teaching and are looking at mastering JavaScript, you can join me in my JavaScript full course, which is available for free on my channel. The course is designed for complete beginners and covers everything you need to know to code JavaScript at a professional level. In the course, you'll experience the same high quality teaching and build a whole range of real life projects from scratch. Join me today and also make sure to subscribe to the channel to stay in the loop with new releases. See you in the JavaScript full course.